Hey guys, today I wanted to take a look at the latest polls that have been released for the 2024 Republican nomination for president, which will occur in 2024 and begin in early 2023. So just in two years, we will be seeing the beginning of the primary season for the 2024 presidential election. This will be a big election for the Republicans as they just lost Donald Trump as their president. And whether or not there will be Trump running, there will be a primary. There will be a primary race with debates and all of that because Donald Trump is no longer the sitting president. He lost the party, the presidency in 2020, which means that there will definitely be people that will be coming after him for the nomination. So, you know, there really isn't even that high of a chance that Donald Trump actually runs. Um, if you saw yesterday, Alan Lickman, uh, who essentially has been able to predict every single election correctly since the 80s, predicted Trump's win in 2016 and Biden's in 2020. He said that Trump is very, very unlikely to run or win the Republican nomination. So this right here, these are the betting odds. I want to take a look at this first. This is basically... You know, people put their money up for who they think will be the nominee, not who they want to be the nominee, but who they think will be the nominee. And right now, Donald Trump, the 45th president, um, the last Republican president, is in the lead right now. Um, he has you know, said that he may run in the future. He has hinted at it, but it's still very, very early on. And a lot of different factors can change whether or not he actually does run. All of his lawsuits, as well as just his age and his health, could be an issue for the former president. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, is in second place. And then Nikki Haley and Christy Noem behind him, followed by Cruz, Pence, and then Cotton, and then Josh Hawley. So if you look at the trend here, essentially what you saw was that Trump's chances weren't the greatest because, you know, there were a lot of people that thought that the Republican Party would be moving away from Donald Trump and the Trump era of politics. But since CPAC's, um, you know, when CPAC occurred, they had Donald Trump as a speaker. And every single speaker at CPAC was basically a staunch Trump supporter, a staunch Trump Republican, which is why his chances rose so much higher afterwards. And Ron DeSantis also gained a lot of fame and popularity as a result of that. Um, so his chances have increased as well. Um, he's an all right governor of Florida in terms of his popularity. But as a Republican, it is still pretty strong in a swing state like Florida um, for Josh Hall or not Josh Hawley, for Nikki Haley, his chances, her chances have decreased by quite a bit. At one point, she was the person with the highest chance of winning the nomination. However, she is not as much of a Trump supporter as many of these other Republicans, and she has been rumored to be running in 2024 for a pretty long time since she left the Trump administration as his um, ambassador to the United Nations. So Nikki Haley, not doing the best right now. If you add in Christy Nome, her chances have increased as well because of CPAC. She was a speaker there, and her chances are now tied with Nikki Haley. Ted Cruz's have never has never really been too high. Um, been around at nine cents a share um, at his highest, and then now it's around five six cents. Um, so not the best for Ted Cruz, um, the runner up in twenty sixteen Republican primary. Uh, they typically don't come back and do that well, as you saw with Bernie Sanders losing. And then finally, Mike Pence, his chances decreased a lot. He went from around second third place with 12 cents a share all the way down to now at six so before we go any further make sure you join my discord server if you have not the link to which is at the very top of the description below so right now still very early but it seems that if people are expecting donald trump to be the nominee first followed by Ron DeSantis, nikki haley and christine gnome so taking a look at the actual polls for this, you see that Donald Trump leads in every single poll where he is included. So you have this one poll. This is the latest poll conducting from February 20th to March 2nd of this year. And you'll see Donald Trump in first place at 51% with every single candidate, every single major candidate in it. So with all the major candidates in it, Donald Trump leads with 51%. If you take out Donald Trump, in the case that Donald Trump does not run, you see Mike Pence, surprisingly, is actually the leader. And this is a trend in many of these polls. As you can see, again, if Donald Trump is not um, on it, so this is with Donald Trump on it, he's at 55 if you take Donald Trump out, so Donald Trump is no longer in the poll, it's undecided first, but then it's followed by Mike Pence. And another one here, Mike Pence, 41, um, if Donald Trump is on here. So as the vice president, Mike Pence still is a major candidate if he does decide to run. But I think that he really lost a lot of his chances of being the 2024 nominee, because if Donald Trump won the 2020 election, he would be running as the vice president of the United States, not the former vice president that lost a re-election. This is different from Joe Biden, because Joe Biden won his re-election. Um, but... 
as a former VP that lost, um, your chances aren't as high, obviously, as if you are the sitting vice president. And then again, same trend here, 55% for, um, for Donald Trump. If you take him out, Mike Pence in first place at 21. And typically, Ron DeSantis is always in second after that. So Ron DeSantis is pulling um, after Mike Pence. But Mike Pence isn't the strongest candidate, much weaker than Joe Biden. And, you know, he might be the more establishment type, uh, you know, the more, you know, he is a, like Trump Republican, but at the end of the day, he is um, a lot more establishment than many of these other Republicans on this list. Uh, he really is the boringest candidate you can possibly think of on this Republican stage here. And then, you know, Donald Trump leads in every single poll, but that does not mean he's going to be the nominee because just because you lead in the polls does not mean you're going to win. It's still very, very early on. Donald Trump was not leading the polls at the beginning. He was a nobody in the beginning of the 2016 primary. Um, so this is before the inauguration of Joe Biden. Still, Trump leads in every single poll. Um, if Trump is out, then it's Mike Pence. As you can see, 44, this is the Mike Pence column. And then you go down. This is before the election. So before this, Mike Pence was doing much, much better at 30%. Um, without Donald Trump. So this was when people, many people did expect Donald Trump to win the 2020 election, but without Trump, it would have been Pence. So, you know, this is all looking very good for the former president, but that's if he really does run. Um, this is a little graph, um, it's really not the most accurate graph at all. Um, but yeah, so this is the national numbers for the Republican primary. And then if you want to take a look at the statewide polling, so the Florida primary, which is a pretty important primary um, in primary politics here, you have Ron DeSantis leads, um, no Trump or um, really just only Republicans from the state of Florida here. So you have Marco Rubio and Rick Scott, the two senators from Florida, but Ron DeSantis leads over both of them. And then in Georgia, Donald Trump, the overwhelming favorite, um, but Iowa, this is the important one. This is the first race, and Donald Trump is destroying this race, 61. Really, the Iowa caucuses is very, very important in a presidential primary, and so these other ones, they don't matter as much. Um, New Hampshire is also pretty important. Donald Trump leads here, of course, but really, it's all about Iowa, and New Hampshire is also pretty important as well. So now, I want to take a look at the popularity of President Trump compared to other political leaders in the country right now. So Joe Biden's favorability is a plus 14.7. This is the highest you're going to see. Nobody is more popular in the government than Joe Biden right now. Nancy Pelosi, negative 10.2. She's underwater, but this is much better than her approval earlier uh, last year. Kevin McCarthy is actually more popular than Nancy Pelosi, believe it or not. But Kevin McCarthy is at negative 5.8. But again, a lot, of, a lot less people actually know who he is. Chuck Schumer, negative 7.8. He used to be way more unpopular than Nancy Pelosi, but his numbers have creeped up a little bit. He's running for re-election in 2022, and he's worried that uh, AOC from New York also, you know, as well, is going to want to challenge Schumer in the Democratic primary for Senate. So that could be a problem for Schumer as the majority leader of the Senate, but we'll see if that actually happens. Mitch McConnell, um, definitely... Uh, very, very unpopular. Negative 37.8. He has a 61% unfavorability rating. And then as for Chuck Schumer, I think that honestly for AOC, if she ran against Kirsten Gillibrand, it would be much better for her because um, Chuck Schumer, I think, has a higher chance of winning than Gillibrand. Um, just in the state of New York, Gillibrand isn't exactly the most liked person ever. Um, and then finally, Donald Trump. Favorable, unfavorable, negative 16.2. So um, it's all right. It's still the worst, except for Mitch McConnell, which you really can't get any worse than that. But Donald Trump right now is less popular than Nancy Pelosi, less popular than Kevin McCarthy, um, Chuck Schumer, all of them, Joe Biden especially. Joe Biden is over 30 points more popular than Donald Trump right now. So his unfavorability is just horrible. I mean, 50, 60 percent favorable, only at 40 percent. You saw, of course, that is his base. That is that 40 percent of people that will always support Donald Trump. And so this is, you know, something else that you can see. So this is within the GOP. So um, this is from a poll. This is from the latest poll released. And basically, they categorize Trump or Republicans into five different categories. So you have the diehard Trump supporters. So no matter what happens, they will support Trump. You have the Trump boosters who essentially 
you know, um, support Trump as well, um, but more supportive of the Republican Party in general than Donald Trump. So these Trump boosters are essentially if the Republicans did not run Donald Trump and Trump ran as a third party candidate, they have a pretty high chance of actually supporting the Republican candidate over Donald Trump. But with Donald Trump in the GOP, they do support Donald Trump. Um, the Infowars GOP, this is um, essentially um, almost always support Donald Trump, but they believe, you know, several uh, QAnon conspiracy theories, um, very favorable of QAnon as well. Um, you have the never Trumpers, essentially just not going to vote for Trump no matter what. These are the 15%, the pretty small minority of people. I mean, this was a majority of the GOP at the beginning of the 2016 Republican primary, but now it has become just 15% of the party. And then for the post-Trump GOP, these are people who supported Donald Trump, are very favorable of him, but they want someone new to lead the party after 2024 or 2020, you know, into 2024. So this is around one fifth of the party wants someone new. They do like Donald Trump, but they just don't want him to lead the party forward. So you see the Trump supporting party, if Trump runs with the GOP, is still very, very high. I mean, his support among the Republican Party right now is at 65% with these three categories. And then it is 35% with these not um, supporting Trump in 2024. So um, this is all right for Donald Trump. Looking at Trump's image um, in 2024, um, this is right now. Um, but among all Republicans, he's still pretty popular at 81%. Um, as you can see, you know, these post-Trump GOP people, they support Trump, but they just don't want him to lead the party in the future. Um, and of course, never Trump, obviously, very, very unpopular view of Trump. Um, most of the other ones, they all definitely support Donald Trump. Um, you know, Trump's job approval is also pretty much the same here, except more Republicans do approve of his job approval than approve of him, you know, in terms of how favorable they view him. And then this is the ballot. So um, you have all Republicans. If Donald Trump was running, 51% of Republicans say they would support Donald Trump. 9% say Mike Pence. 7% Ron DeSantis. 6% Nikki Haley. Mitt Romney, the 2012 nominee at just five. He's not going to run. Ted Cruz at three. So um, right now, Donald Trump, definitely the very, very dominant person in the field. But if he does not run, it's going to be Mike Pence or Ron DeSantis that has the highest chance. And if they don't run then, you know, I guess um, the Trump wing of the party would probably revert to someone like Ted Cruz or Josh Hawley. Um, but Nikki Haley is probably going to gain more of that moderate Trump support as well as that more of just the moderate Republican in general. Um, you know, those kinds of voters probably will go for Nikki Haley in 2024. And so I think that this put her at a disadvantage because she has not aligned herself with Trump as much. Um, as many of these other candidates and the party right now is overwhelmingly a, the Trump party. So um, that might be an issue for Nikki Haley, who has essentially been kind of like the front runner for the 2024 nomination for a very, very long time now before the 2020 election with the loss of Donald Trump. Um, so, yeah, essentially, um, Donald Trump is you know, you got to give it to him. He is a very, very strong candidate, and that is why a lot of Republicans do support him. He was the one that flipped the Rust Belt. He flipped Florida. He, you know, was able to hold on to many of these battleground states. He did better than Mitt Romney in almost every single state. The only state that Mitt Romney did better in was really just Texas and Alaska as well. Actually, no, Alaska went, actually went better for Trump in 2016, but of course a lot worse in 2020. So, Donald Trump has not been good for Texas, for the Republican Party. Um, if he runs again, it will probably be even better for the Democratic Party. But, you know, everywhere else, Donald Trump has been a very good nominee for the GOP. Um, you know, he won them the government in 2016. And so a lot of people, you know, it's become a cult following at this point for President Trump among the Republican Party. But there are many people, many, many people who are skeptical as to whether or not he will actually run. If you look at the chances of Donald Trump filing for um, President before 2022 so this is in 2021 there's a 15 percent chance around the same for mike pence before 2023 so um essentially the chances of them announcing anything soon is pretty low at this moment in time um so yeah i think that honestly right now in my opinion the strongest nominee definitely would be ron DeSantis. i don't think it's donald trump um you know there's too many people in the party that do not support donald trump but ron DeSantis, he has trump support and he's been able to also have 
more of that moderate Republican support, which is, I think, something that is very, very good for the governor. Um, and I think that could definitely win him the nomination with his support among Republicans just in general. Um, you know, unlike someone like um, Ted Cruz, who would really only have Trump supporting support Nikki Haley, mostly just moderate Republicans, um, you know, like Mitt Romney. So uh, Ron DeSantis, I think, is right now my pick for the 2024 Republican nominee in terms of who I think would win. And I think he's the strongest candidate for president from the GOP field um, right now as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you like it if you enjoyed it. Comment down below who you think the 2024 Republican nominee for president will be. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. Join my Discord server, the link to which is the very top of the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.